Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic about what an amazing product ganache is and how perfect it is for frosting cake quickly and with minimum effort. We'll ganache two cakes to show you how this works and what's best to avoid. Mastering this technique will definitely open new opportunities for you. This coating is suitable to draw on and perfect for creating various textures and chocolate velour. In short, this technique is an essential part of every cake baker's skill arsenal. Ganache is a chocolate-based frosting. On a chilled cake, it sets quite quickly, so what sets it aside from the others is that working with it requires speed. Before you begin frosting, make sure that your ganache is smooth, silky, lump-free, and of a consistency convenient for you. The temperature of our ganache is 23 degrees Celsius. It's better though to go by consistency rather than temperature. To begin, you will need hard cake boards. We never use cardboard cake boards because they easily bend and may cause the cake to crack. You will also need a very sturdy and stable metal or wooden turntable like this one. It's steady and rotates smoothly. Then you will need what we call the brakes. This could be a piece of an old silicone mat, a wet cloth, or a napkin placed underneath the cake for it to not slide around on the smooth metal surface of the turntable when frosting. And last but not least, you will need the cake itself. Set and chilled in the refrigerator for at least six hours. In this video, we will frost two cakes, a bigger and a smaller one. Of the working tools, we will need an offset or angled spatula. These vary in blade lengths and handle angles. The length of our spatula's blade is 16 centimeters with a wide angle between the blade and the handle. And you will also need two scrapers, one large and one small. Smoothing scrapers should be thin and straight or untextured to make the surface of the cake as smooth as possible. And the length of the scraper should be greater than the height of the cake. So if you're smoothing a taller cake, choose an appropriate scraper. This will make the process easier and faster. This rule also works vice versa. For example, a smaller cake will be more convenient to smooth with a smaller scraper. A wider scraper will only complicate the job. You will also need a mini scraper to remove excess frosting, smooth out small bumps, and clean the cake board. So let's get started. Being professionals, we frost cakes without the use of a piping bag. With practice, you will notice that it actually saves a lot of time, and you will also save on the piping bags. For this video, we specifically chose an unevenly assembled cake to show you that with the right technique and high quality ganache, you can easily correct this mistake. Soon you'll see for yourself. Now let's start frosting. Apply a small drop of ganache to the cake board. This way the cake will stand firmly and won't slide around. Begin with the crumb coat. This will give the cake the proper cylindrical shape and will lock in all the crumbs so that they don't get into the final coat. Note that the crumb coat should not be thick or perfect. Start by spreading some ganache over the top of the cake. Here more is better than less because the excess will go on to the sides. Spread the ganache with smooth movements of your offset spatula to create a flat, even surface. Smooth the excess ganache over the sides right away. To correct the initial unevenness of the cake, we will purposefully apply a thicker layer of ganache at this stage. Apply the ganache evenly with the tip of your spatula. From time to time, clean off the blade. This is better done with the help of a scraper so that you can smooth this frosting on right away. Then place the scraper at a 45 degree angle to the cake so that the tip of the blade touches the cake board. Then begin to rotate the turntable. Actually, the angle between the scraper and the cake greatly affects the result. With an acute angle, when you're holding the scraper almost flat against the cake, you're spreading and smoothing the frosting. If the angle is greater than 45 degrees, you're removing excess frosting. That's just one of the interesting nuances of working with this tool. Remove excess ganache with the spatula and apply it to those places where there isn't enough. Once you're finished adding it, go over it with a scraper. 
Repeat these steps until your cake acquires the proper shape. Remember that the crumb coat doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, so don't put much effort there. Focus on giving the cake the right shape. This will quicken and simplify the next stage of ganaching. Smooth the crown of ganache with the offset spatula, moving from the edge in towards the center. Whether you do this towards yourself or away from yourself doesn't matter. You can also do this with a scraper. For some, this is more convenient. Now go over the sides once more with a scraper. At the end of the frosting process, there will always be some excess frosting left on the cake board. For it not to get in the way, clean up the cake board with a small scraper and put the cake in the refrigerator to set for 15 to 20 minutes. Before applying the final coat, check the state of your ganache. If it has stiffened or become lumpy, it needs to be brought back to working condition. You can find the link to this recipe for our easy to use ganache below the video and take a peek at our school's website. Now that the crumb coat has set and the ganache has thickened, we can easily cut the crown off with our small scraper. The final coat we will apply the same way we applied the crumb coat. However, at this stage, we will pay more attention to the coating itself. This stage will determine the final appearance of our cake. Let's take a closer look at this process using our second cake as an example. This time, we will concentrate more on details and sequence. Spread the ganache over the top of the cake with your offset spatula so that it's parallel to the cake board. Carefully smooth the ganache over the side of the cake surface. Then take the scraper and hold it against the side of the cake. Make sure that the bottom fully touches the cake board. Gently start turning the table with little pressure on the scraper, smoothing out any unevenness. Note that our scraper is soft, flexible, and of the right size. When working with the final coat, we give preference to flexible scrapers. We got smooth sides and a tall so-called crown. Cut it off with a clean spatula moving from the edge in towards the center. Clean the spatula each time. For this, a damp lint-free towel will do great. Make sure though that it is lint-free because fibers and frosting are, of course, unacceptable. The reason this is important is because ganache thickens quite quickly, especially on the spatula and scraper. Sometimes it's enough to forget to clean off the spatula once for the whole cake to end up striped and uneven. If that's the case, cover the cake with a thin layer of ganache once more and smooth it over carefully with a clean spatula and scraper. If there isn't enough in certain places, add some and smooth it over with a clean scraper. After that, go over the top and the side of the cake with a scraper for the final time. During the ganaching process, sometimes take a few steps back from the cake to check its symmetry. 
It's convenient if you have something like an even windowsill, tiles, or brickwork like we do in the background. This way you'll be able to check how even the top and side lines of the cake are. You can also check the angle of the side wall by placing a clean scraper against the cake. If the cake's shape resembles a trapezoid or a barrel, add some more ganache and pay attention to the angle of your scraper while carefully smoothing out any unevenness. The small crown on top we will leave on purpose and cut off carefully after the cake sets to get the proper right angle. If your crown came out tall, repeat the same steps as before. Clean the cake board and put the cake in the refrigerator for 15 to 20 minutes. Once the final coat sets, cut off the crown with smooth movements of your small flexible scraper, applying almost no pressure. Remember how lopsided the first cake was in the very beginning? That's because the success in making a beautiful cake is mostly due to ganaching technique and the recipe of the ganache itself. A badly frosted cake with an uneven coating will not look so expensive, elegant, or attractive no matter how chic and expensive the decor is. So take a look at our school's website. There you'll find the recipe for our easy to work with ganache. And not just one flavor, but four. Now you know how easy ganache is to frost with. All you need is patience and practice, and what's also important, the right tools. And then success is guaranteed. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to not miss our new useful lessons. Bye bye, see you again!